Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so this is going to be my first chapter review for Kaiju number eight, a newer series of Shonen Jump written by Naoya Matsumoto. And if you haven't checked out the series just yet, I definitely highly recommend it. I mean, the best way I can describe the series is that it's kind of like Attack on Titan set in the modern day and nowhere near as gory. Now, because this is a newer series and there's not really much to talk about with the chapter I'm going to be reviewing, I am actually going to start the video off by describing what the series is about. So basically it's about this guy named Kafka who's I believe 32 at the beginning of the series, so a little bit older than your normal Shonen Jump protagonist. But anyway, he's this guy who lives in this world where giant monsters are constantly attacking and there's a military force devoted to basically stopping these monsters. Like I said, kind of like Attack on Titan. But the only thing is that basically when he was a kid, him and his childhood friend dreamed of joining the military so they can actually hunt down the kaijus after they destroyed their hometown. I don't think any of their family members died in the beginning of the series. It's just that they were kind of upset by their hometown being destroyed. Actually, no, I think the childhood friend's dog died in the beginning. So that was a little bit sad. But anyway, cut ahead like 20 something years later when he's 32 and she's like, I want to say in her late 20s. And we end up finding out that the childhood friend ended up climbing her way up to basically being a captain of her own division in the military force, while Kafka ended up flunking out of every single test that he took until he hit the age limit and then eventually had to retire from trying to join the military and ended up joining instead with one of the companies that were responsible for cleaning up the corpses of the kaijus after each battle. Now after he becomes a veteran with that company, he ends up meeting this new recruit who also has the aspiration to join the military, who tells him that they actually raised the age limit to 33 that year, so that means that since he's 32, he has one last chance if he really wants to, of trying to join up with the military and catching up to his childhood friend. Which, at first, because of the fact that he failed constantly over and over again, he's a little hesitant to try and take up that offer, but once the two of them actually end up surviving the encounter with a kaiju where Kafka actually tries to sacrifice himself in order to give his friend enough time to escape, he actually ends up getting to resolve again to try at least one last time to join the military. But then while the two of them are actually recovering in the hospital and actually deciding or declaring that they're both going to try their head at joining the military, we actually have the small kaiju that comes in and force feeds itself to Kafka, turning him into the title character of the series, Kaiju Number 8. And basically the entire series from there is basically him trying his best to join up with the military to become an officer so he can keep his promise that he made with his childhood friend, while at the same time using his kaiju powers, keeping it hidden from the rest of the world besides his new friend that he just met, but keeping all his powers hidden from the world while using them to basically save people whenever they're in danger for kaijus. But yeah, that's a basic summary of the series. Like I said, it actually gave me heavy vibes of Attack on Titan, kind of mixed with a superhero kind of aspect to it since he's trying to basically protect people while keeping his identity a secret of being a kaiju. Or he's not really a kaiju, he's more of like a kaiju hybrid now, but do you understand what I mean? It's actually a really enjoyable series. If you have the Shonen Jump app, which you should definitely get because it's only like 260 a month, I mean, you get literally every single series that's currently being published by Shonen Jump for free to read the entirety with no limitations. You should really go check that out to have no, you know, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but if you don't have it, you should definitely should. And you can definitely catch up with Kaiju Number 8 very fast, only 37 chapters out today. And you can really do it in one day. You can really catch up in one day. That's in fact how I caught up. I caught up by reading the entirety of the series in one day prior to this newest chapter that came out this week. Anyway, getting into chapter 37, which a brief summary of what it led us to chapter 37 is that eventually Kafka got caught being Kaiju number 8. And he got sent to the headquarters of the entire military where the director general of the military, director general, uh, I think it's Shinomiya is how you pronounce it. He is now confronting Kafka, the two of them are fighting, and eventually Kafka actually lost control of his body and the kaiju side of him has taken over. So now the director general is kind of being pushed into a corner with the possibility of being killed off by Kafka. And that's pretty much where the chapter opens up with the two of them continuing their fight. The general trying his hardest to basically hold off, and by the way, the general is not any lightweight. He is the strongest member of the military that we've seen so far. And he really is being pushed to the ringer by Kafka right now in his kaiju number 8 form. But we have the director's daughter, who's actually a close friend of Kafka, who's actually part of the same military unit, uh, Kikaru, who is watching the fight go down, and basically she's kind of internalizing what's going on and really struggling with the entire event. Because on the one hand, she personally went there to try to basically beg her father not to kill off she, uh, Kafka, because she's really grown attached to him, and it's kind of been hinted throughout the entire series that, you know, she might be developing kind of romantic feelings for him, or it might just be that basically she's starting to see him as a father figure because... It's kind of the basic story of a military daughter in series where the dad's kind of been strict on her her entire life, really never praised her, just kind of expected her to be perfect. While since she met Kafka, he's been kind of like praising her and making her feel better about herself, kind of like the fatherly role that she's always wanted from her dad, she's getting from him now. So yeah, now while watching this fight, she's having the basic internal struggle of she wants her dad to survive and she wants to actually go in there and try to stop Kafka from killing her dad. 
But at the same time, if she knows that she steps in and actually basically attacks Kafka, she's going to be accepting in her head that he's no longer human. He's definitely just Kaiju number eight. So she wants to still believe in the version of Kafka that she knows and actually trusts. So she's hesitant to jump in and try to stop him. And then on Kafka's side of things, he basically in his own internal mind is trying to basically break free from the Kaiju's control so that he can take control of his body again and stop himself from killing the Director General. But he's struggling to do it and he's really just failing at it throughout the entirety of chapter 36 and in the beginning of this chapter. Until eventually he ends up realizing that Kikuru is there, she's watching a fight, and he really does not want to kill her dad in front of her. So because of her, he actually gets that extra push to actually break free from the Kaiju's control. And literally just as it seems like he's actually about to take control of his body again, he ends up getting eaten by an eternal version of the kaiju, which basically cements the fact that he's not going to be able to do anything. In fact, it's actually kind of reminiscent to the time that Aaron actually got eaten by Titan in the beginning of Attack on Titan, because just like how Aaron lost his arm when he got eaten by that Titan trying to save Armin, Kafka, when he gets eaten by the kaiju in his mind, he ends up losing his leg. So yeah, at this point in the chapter, it seemed like we were really going to be getting another chapter dealing with kaiju number eight being in control versus Kafka. And... I was actually kind of digging that because of the fact that we were really going to see what Kafka can do when he just lets loose and not have his like morality and personality holding his powers back. And because of that, I got to admit, I was a little disappointed by the fact that, you know, Kafka remembering his childhood friend and the promise they made and the fact that she's actually kind of rooting for him despite knowing that he's actually a kaiju hybrid right now. The fact that he actually basically by remembering her got the extra power, the extra push to basically take control back of his body. That disappointed me a little bit because I kind of wanted to see more of this fight because I really do feel like even though Director Shinomiya is actually getting destroyed right now, I kind of felt like he was holding back a little bit because we can already tell going into this fight, and I believe it started in chapter 34 or 35, we could already tell going into the fight that he wasn't actually trying to kill Kafka, he was more just testing him, and I want to actually see what he would actually have to do or what he would be capable of doing when he's pushed to the corner and actually had to decide, alright, I'm going to have to kill this guy right here or right now or I'm going to die. But yeah, that's pretty much where the chapter ends with Kafka regaining control of his body. Now, even though this was very obviously a test, I'm struggling to find out why Director Shinomiya, and I'm actually looking forward to finding out in the next chapter, why Director Shinomiya is going to let Kafka go free and rejoin the military, because even though, like I said, it was a test and he actually probably wasn't originally planning on killing Kafka, after Kafka lost control that easily in the fight, it makes it hard to believe that someone as strict as Director Shinomiya will let Kafka go free after that. So I'm interested in finding out what the reason as to why he goes Kafka rejoin the military is. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it for the chapter. I can't wait to see what happens in the next week's chapter, chapter 38. That's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review for Kaiju Number 8 and come back for more. Thank you and have a great time. Peace.